tonight. Uh, Bill Foster will have our scene. Dennis Fine will have our lesson. And Joel Maddox will close us in prayer. And we'll begin our service with opening prayer to be the John Paul. Pray with me. Almighty God, my Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be their great and holy name. Your Lord, we come in prayer tonight, praising your high and holy name, giving you all the glory, Father. Thanking you for this opportunity we have to come in prayer with love and joy and peace in our hearts. Thanking you for this beautiful country we live in, the wonderful freedom and blessings that we enjoy. Thank you, Father, for this church and here that meets here in Malden. Church the worldwide. We pray, Father, that the truth will always be taught in your church. Pray, Father, as your children, that we would continue to open our Bible daily and we continue to study and, and grow in the truth and knowledge that can only be found in your word. Pray, Father, that we would continue to grow in the knowledge to the point to where we can share with others your love and your truth so that they may have that opportunity to, to reach having one day with you. Pray, Father, tonight for our brother Dennis. Pray that he might have a ready recollection of that lesson that he has prepared this week and that he has prepared to give. Pray that he'll deliver it in a way to us that we can fully understand it so we may be able to apply it to our lives and continue that walk with you, Lord. Pray, Father, tonight for <coughs> brother Joel as he leads our song service. Pray we would all lift our voices unto thee. As we sing our hymns to you, Lord. Pray, Lord, tonight for those who are a number who are not here, those who were mentioned earlier. We pray for Sister Sue and Sister Teen as they go through their recovery. We pray that, that they would regain their strength to where they could come and be with us once again. Pray, Father, for those who may be sick this hour, those that may be administering the care to them. We pray that they would regain their strength and health and and also be able to be back with us. We pray, Father, for those who may be working this this, this hour, those who may be traveling. Pray that they would have a safe trip home. Uh, most importantly, Father, we do pray for those this hour who may be spiritually sick. We pray that something may be said or done in their lives and they may change the error of their ways and come to your fold before it's eternally too late. Dear Lord, we're so grateful, again, to have this Lord's Day and this opportunity to come here and meet and worship you in spirit and in truth. And we just pray, Lord, that all that is said and done in this worship service will be pleasing unto thee. And we do pray for forgiveness, Father, when we do fall short as Christians you expect us to be. This prayer tonight is in the loving and strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Joel. Seven seven three. Seven seven three.
Will your rank adrift or firm remain? We have an anchor that keeps us all steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. It is safely moored, twill storm withstand, for it is well secured by the Savior's hand. And the cables pass from his heart to mine, can defy the blast through strength divine. We have an anchor that keeps us all steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. It will firmly in the straits of fear, when the breakers have told the reef is near. Though the tempest rave and the wild winds blow, not a angry wave shall our bark overflow. We have an anchor that keeps us soul. Steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Our hymn of encouragement will be <laughs> six, eight, seven. <clears throat> six, eight, seven. For our lesson, 104. 104. Dark and dreary be life's way and burdens hard to bear. There's one whose love will never fail, my heart shall ne'er despair. My hope is stayed on him today, and he will safely lead to that sweet home beyond the sea. Christ's love is all I need. Christ's love is all I need each day. I know Christ's love, Christ's precious love is all I need. He'll lead me safely all life's way. I know, I know Christ's precious, precious love is all I need. Though trials press on every side and many snares there be, I look in simple faith to him who calm the stormy seas. He is the shepherd kind and true, his sheep he'll ever feed. This cheers me on and makes me strong, Christ's love is all I need. Christ's love is all I need each day. I know, I know. Christ's precious love is all I need. He'll lead me safely on life's way. I know, I know, Christ's precious, precious love is all I need. And when I hear the boatman's call come across the chilly tide, I shall not fear to launch my bark, for Christ is at my side. He bore the sting of death for me, has met my every need. And so I sing this sweet refrain, Christ's love is all I need. Christ's love is all I need each day. I know, I know. Christ's 
precious love is all I need. You lead me safely on life's way. I know, I know, Christ's precious, precious love is all I need. Many years ago, a young man had landed a very good job at a young age. Of course, it was a job that required diligence. It was a job that had its inherent risks. He worked at a chemical plant. And then one day at work, there was an explosion, and he was caught in that explosion, and he lost his sight. In an instant, his life changed. He could no longer see his young wife. But like most people, he had this deep hope within him that someday he will be able to see again. Fast forward almost three decades, at the age of 47, he got the news that renewed his hope of sight. His doctors told him that he was an excellent candidate for cornea transplant. The procedure worked and for the first time in 28 years, he was able to see his wife, his children, and his grandchildren. The tears that flowed down his cheeks at the sight of the ones that he loved was brought about by the hope that he held for many years becoming a reality. Hope is the one thing that gives us something to look forward to. Hope is the thing that pushes us and motivates us to move forward. There are times when our hope is rekindled because we see ourselves getting closer to our goals. Or maybe someone else that is very close to us has achieved their goals. And while there are many things to hope for and to achieve in our own lifetime, the greatest hope that brings the greatest joy is the hope in Jesus Christ. We'll go back to 1 Peter tonight. But chapter 1 and verse 3 is where we'll start. And Peter writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Being able to see again. Being able to live another day is great. But what far exceeds any of that is the hope of eternal life. You see, no matter what we can accomplish on this earth, nothing comes close to that. We are promised by Jesus himself that as Christians, if we remain faithful according to Revelation 2.10, if we remain faithful unto death, we will receive that crown of life. The hope that we hold in our hearts becomes a reality. Heaven is actually within reach of everyone if they grab hold of the right things. When we place our hope on other things, our chances of being disappointed are very great, especially when it comes to that last day. Solomon in Proverbs 10 and verse 28, he writes here that 
The hope of the righteous bring joy, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. We have a choice. We have a choice of what hope we rely on. Paul in Ephesians 2 in verses 11 through 13. He writes, Therefore remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by those who was called by the circumcision, which is made in the flesh of hands. Remember that at a time you were separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenants of promise. This is the important part. Having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once afar so off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. No Christ, no hope. That's what the Gentiles were fighting. Without Christ, there is no hope. Before Christ came, the Gentiles had no hope. Friends, the only thing that keeps us from eternal life is ourselves. No one else. We have a world full of people like Felix in Acts chapter 24. Here was a man who was no dumb. A man who was intelligent. A man who put off embracing hope hope of eternal life. In verses 24 and 25 of that chapter, it said, And after some days Felix came with his wife Drusilla, who was Jewish, and he sent for Paul, and he heard him speak about the faith of Jesus Christ. And as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the coming Jesus, judgment, Felix became alarmed. And he said, Go away for the present. And when I get the opportunity, I will summon you. How many opportunities have we allowed to pass by? Jesus, as our hope, is also our anchor. Hebrews 6, verse 19. As we have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain. I'm sure all of us here this evening are grateful for what Jesus has done for us. But the thing is, is that we should be overwhelmed with confidence when we reflect on what he has done for us. How he has given us power over sin. How he's became our high priest. The one and the only one who was able to enter that curtain in the Holy of Holies one time and one time only for all time. Jesus only had to go once and made the atonement for the sins of mankind for all time. No wonder that Paul tells us in Romans 12 and verse 12 to rejoice in hope. I do like that idea about our hope in Christ as being an anchor to our soul. You know, when you think about it, and, and Barney, I don't know what ship kind of ship you served on, uh, but I kind of always in mind of the aircraft carrier when you are one of the large ships, and then as it's coming out of the harbor or wherever, and you see it along the side, on each side, is these huge anchors. And when the captain gives the order to drop the anchor, you know, that ship is not going anywhere.
You know, when Peter, John, when they were before the council in Acts chapter 4, it's amazing, and, and I like the way that Peter described Jesus in those five verses, 8 through 12. And it tells us then that Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning the good deed done by a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it all be known to you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is no salvation in anyone else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men which by we must be saved. You know, when we look at construction, it is the cornerstone of the buildings that anchors the walls together. It makes it possible for a structure to stand straight and true. And that's what Jesus is to his church and to us as Christians. We can faithfully say, no Christ, no hope. It's just that simple. But you know, while Peter had all that confidence in the world there before the council, it wasn't always that way, and we understand it full well. Of him denying Jesus three times. And then him hiding behind closed doors with the other apostles. We find in John 20, verse 19. We all have probably experienced, maybe I shouldn't paint such a broad brush. Many of us have experienced something which causes us to lose hope. Maybe it was the downfall of someone that we held very high respect for. Maybe it was a loved one. And I can just imagine the apostles after the crucifixion, the hope that they had placed on Jesus Christ being dashed to pieces on that cross, not fully understanding what was happening. See, oftentimes that's the case in us. We don't fully understand. And then Jesus appeared to them. The apostles were baptized by the Holy Spirit on Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. Hope reignited. Fears were erased. From that point on, nothing could keep them from acknowledging Jesus as the Son of God. Nothing could keep them from proclaiming the gospel. Because having hope in Christ made them bold but it not only makes them bold it should make us bold also the apostles could finally see the big picture they could finally put their lives on the line without fear because they understood that it was worth it. If we are willing to put our faith and trust and hope in Jesus, we will reap the eternal rewards of heaven. That eternal hope that we have in Christ, it calls us to speak out for the Lord, even if it makes life hard for us. Peter in 1 Peter chapter 1 again, verses 13 through 19. Peter writing to the brethren, Therefore, preparing your minds for action, being sober-minded, set, you set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you 
at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as Father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from your forefathers, not with the perishable things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like the lamb without blemish or spot. As we live day to day, where is our focus? What do we see afar off? If our focus is on heaven, And the joy that we will experience, we will never lose hope. It was hope that drove the boldness of the apostles. It was hope that helped them to endure the suffering they faced. What suffering do we endure? Have we lost friends? Have we lost family members because of who we choose to be? We're ridiculed. We're parodied. We're often spoke of things that we are not. But it is going to be worth it all because we please God. Hebrews chapter 6 and verses 11 and 12, the Hebrew writer says, and we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness and to have the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Brethren, our labor will never be in vain if we persevere in our work for the Lord. And while I may apologize this evening for what I said this morning about a so-called survey, I didn't mean to hurt one's feelings if they were hurt. But I meant every word. Our hope cannot be that true hope when we place it on everything else but God in Christ. And if we are more interested in placing our hope on the things that are outside, the things that are temporary, and not the things that are eternal, then I can understand fully why so many people fear the last day. You know, growing up, as some of you probably know, when in the early 60s and the threat of, of World War III and nuclear war was breaking out, and, and every Saturday afternoon in my hometown, the fire department had a big siren. That's how they got alerted. In a lot of small towns throughout the United States, that's how they know that there is an emergency somewhere. But every Saturday at 12 o'clock, they ran a test on that siren throughout the whole county. Now, if you're an eight-year-old and you're out playing ball on a Saturday afternoon and you have no clue what time it is and that siren goes off, the first thing you think about is where can I run and how? And my dad gave me the best advice ever. He said, I asked him, where do we go? He says, well, I'm going to go in and get your catcher's mitt, and I'm going to go out and catch the thing. He said, because I will never feel a thing. It'll happen so fast. Friends, Christ is coming back the same way. It's going to happen so fast. We're not going to realize it. 
having that hope means that we're out there every day praying that day comes quickly because we know that this torment in this life will be over. When you read the book of Revelation and you look at how John describes it, what goes through your mind? You know, you see all these precious jewels and minerals and, and great pearls. A, a pearl, one gate is one pearl. Lucky if I get a speck of sand out of an oyster's mouth. And we look at those things and the beauty that he describes in it and, and streets, the gold so pure you can see through them. But we have actually no idea what it looks like. Can you imagine if we have to describe it that way? Just how much more beautiful it will actually be. All these things will become a reality because we know that our hope in Christ will cause all these things to happen. Our hope in eternal life should be the motivating factor to help us press on to the goal and make it to heaven no matter what life throws at us. If you are not a child of God, where does your hope lie today? You place your hope in someone or someone else? It might get you ahead in this life, but it will not get you ahead in the next. Placing our hope where it needs to be is the only way. In obeying that gospel, you can have that hope of eternal life. And together, as we collectively work with one another, encouraging one another, studying with one another, we can make sure that we will all get there together. We will be there with the ones who have went before us, the ones that we've held in our arms, the ones that we had loved for many years that have gone on before us. We will be reunited. For many of them, we know exactly where they are, where they will be. Is that where we want to be? The repentance and confession and being baptized for the remission of sins, you can have that hope renewed and strengthened and be ready to go. And if you are a child of God and if your hope has been wavering, then you need to get it renewed through repentance. We want to give you that opportunity. If anyone has a need, won't you come as together we stand and we sing? <coughs> It's so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know the saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how
The table is prepared for those who do not have the opportunity this morning to partake. If you come forward and do so. Even though many of us had partaken of this this morning, let us go back around this table together and continue our reflection on that sacrifice. And if you will, bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your son and for his intense desire to please you and to obey your will. But we know, Lord, that it was not an easy decision. The Bible tells us that. That he was hoping that there would be another way, but he knew deep in his heart there was no other. So he unselfishly gave himself for us. And as we partake of this bread in which we ask your blessings on. May we remember that body that was broken on that cross, the hands that were pierced, the feet that were pierced, the side that was pierced. And may we truly hold within our hearts the love that we have because of that tremendous sacrifice. And we ask these things in your Son Jesus' name. Amen. bow again. Our Father in heaven, we come before you now and asking your blessings on this fruit of the vine that represents the blood of your son Jesus Christ who, that was shed on that cross. And we pray, Lord, that as we take this time to reflect on that sacrifice, that we truly realize just how fortunate we are to have a God who loves us so much who is willing to sacrifice his son so that we can have that, have that hope of eternal life. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. basket is placed on the table for those who may not have had the opportunity this morning to give. May you bow with me, please. Our God and Father in heaven, we thank you so much for allowing us to be the caretakers of all these things that you have blessed us with in this life. And as caretakers, Lord, we pray that, that we are doing you justice and caring for these things, and we are just so grateful you supply them to us. You have given us our needs, Lord, and you've also given to us so that we can have our wants. So we pray, Lord, as we give some of that back to you to help in the work of this church to further thy kingdom on this earth. We pray, Lord, that we do it with this cheerful and, and generous heart. Allow you to know, Lord, that we are good stewards of the things you have blessed us with. And we ask that you continue, Lord, to bless us richly, not only with the things that we have in this life, but with your love and understanding and grace. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Is there anything further by anybody else before we dismiss this evening? If you'll stand, we'll be dismissed with prayer. <clears throat> Most gracious and kind of Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the opportunity that you have given us, Lord, to come here tonight. We're thankful for Joel, for his ability to lead us in song service. We're thankful for Dennis, for the lessons that he has brought to us this morning and tonight. We pray that each and every one of us have listened very attentively to the things that he has said from thy word.
pray that we will take these things, apply them to our lives, and become stronger Christians, and that we will be examples to others. We're so thankful for the ones that have been sick, that you have brought them back uh, to their health. Pray that the ones that are sick, that you would watch over them and comfort them. Pray that you would be with our shut-ins, that you would also watch over them. Pray that you would always watch over us, that you would guide, guard, and direct us. Forgive us of our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.